Hello, beautiful people. If you're new here, my name is Amanda Zitto. I've been camping off motorcycles for over 10 years, and I remember how overwhelming all of the different options were when I first started trying to pick out gear to go camping with. If you're just getting started camping and you don't know where to start when it comes to down versus synthetic fill sleeping bags, hopefully this video will help you make a more informed decision for you and your wallet. <laughs> Before we dive into the breakdown of each kind of insulation, I want to address a very old argument that is made between down versus synthetic sleeping bags that I really think should not be influencing your decision when considering what kind of sleeping bag to buy. And that is the argument that synthetic sleeping bags will still insulate you even when wet. While this argument is technically true to a very small degree, it doesn't take into account some very important things. Like one, if your sleeping bag is wet, your body is going to have to work much, much harder to keep itself warm because it's also trying to warm up a wet sleeping bag. You are warming the sleeping bag. The sleeping bag is not warming you. You are the source of heat and thus you must heat the air around you before the insulation can do its job of trapping that heat against your body. Basic science tells us that when moisture evaporates, it cools the surface that it evaporates from. Kind of like when you're sweaty and a nice breeze runs through your shirt. Now think of that happening to the thing that is supposed to be trapping the heat against your body. You could start to see why trying to warm a wet sleeping bag maybe isn't the best idea. Bad for your sleep, bad for your body, and absolutely not something that you want to do unless it is an absolute emergency and there is nothing else that you can do. Really, the argument of synthetic still insulating you when wet is made by backpackers and people who spend time in the backcountry more than a day's hike from town. This is an extreme survival situation that most of us who go motorcycle camping don't really experience. Most of the time, we're never more than a day's travel from a town, even on foot. If you are truly worried about this kind of an emergency situation where your sleeping bag is wet, you would be better off carrying an emergency blanket or a bivy. It's going to do a much better job of blocking out wind chill and trying to insulate your body heat than a wet sleeping bag will, no matter what the insulation type is. With that out of the way, the more important things that you should be worrying about when choosing a sleeping bag is the temperature rating of the bag, how small it will pack down, the weight of the bag, and its price. So in order to understand temperature rating, you need to understand how a sleeping bag works and what its job is. I touched on it a little bit before, but the job of the sleeping bag is just to trap a thin layer of air around your body. The insulation of your chosen sleeping bag is just there to keep that warm air that was heated by your body from escaping. The better your given insulation is at lofting up or fluffing up, the better it is at creating little pockets for that warm air to rest in. The temperature rating listed on any given sleeping bag, especially in the US, is just the temperature at which the sleeping bag will keep you alive. Don't be fooled that that temperature is what temperature you will be comfortable at. Some newer sleeping bags will come with a range of temperature ratings from extreme, which is at the point at which you will survive and not die, but you won't be comfortable, and up to the comfort rating, which the idea being is that it can be that temperature outside, you can be in the sleeping bag, and still be relatively comfortable. How most manufacturers test their sleeping bags to arrive at the temperature rating that we see on the label is that they take a dummy or a model, they put it in base layers and a hat inside of the sleeping bag on top of a sleeping pad that has an insulated R value of at least four. If you don't know what R value is, I'll put a little cheat sheet here on the screen for you. Most R values go from zero to about eight or nine. Ideally, you would have something in the four to five range, even for sleeping in the summertime, because it does get cold at night. So these sleeping bags are not designed for you just to take out into the woods, lay on the ground, and sleep in the sleeping bag. You're intended to have a sleeping system. So you have a sleeping pad on which you lay your sleeping bag on, and that is the way that these are rated. So the rule of thumb to try to find a temperature rating that you're going to be comfortable at is that if it's not explicitly stated as the comfort rating, you take the temperature rating of a bag, say it's 20 degrees, and you add 10 degrees to that rating. So that makes it about 30 degrees at which it would be comfortable. Unless you are a cold sleeper like me, in which case it's better to add 15 to 20 degrees to that rating to find the temperature at which you're going to be a little bit more comfortable. 
<laughs> assuming that you're wearing all of your base layers and a hat inside of your sleeping bag as well. If you're going to be buying a sleeping bag for a specific trip and a specific place, or if you will only be camping in a certain season in areas around where you live, use WeatherSpark. It's a wonderful website and look at the average low temperature for that area. Ideally, you want your sleeping bag to be rated for at least 10 degrees lower than the average low temperature at night. Moving on to the two main kinds of insulation for sleeping bags, which is down and synthetic. Starting with down, down is the under layer of feathers that sit right next to a goose or a duck's skin. They are one of the best natural insulators. All of their ultra fine layers of structure creates natural air pockets that trap heat. Down is rated by fill power, so the higher quality of the down, the more space it will take up when it lofts or fluffs up. For example, something labeled 700 fill will loft up to 700 cubic inches per ounce. The important part of that statement is that the higher number of fill power, the better quality of down it's going to be, and it's going to be much better at trapping heat. This little tidbit, in combination with down's ability to compress very small without damaging the fiber's ability to loft, is very ideal when thinking about motorcycle camping. The durability of down also means that it will last a very long time if taken care of properly. Small pack size, lightweight, very durable, very warm in comparison to the weight and size once packed. It all sounds really ideal, right? The downside to down is the cost. You're paying for the quality of the insulation. AKA, a good down sleeping bag is going to be expensive. Now, I'm not gonna preach to you about thinking about the longevity of that product or how much you're going to use it when you have sticker shock over an expensive down sleeping bag. However, I will ask you if you do find a high fill sleeping bag on the market that is relatively inexpensive, that's brand new, to take a minute to think about where that product is coming from, the manufacturing process that it went through, and whether you can really trust if it is actually filled with high quality down. If you are at all worried about down being an animal byproduct, I suggest doing a little bit of research into the responsible down standard and checking if the brand of sleeping bag that you're interested in follows the standard. A really easy way to check if they do is to check if the company is Blue Sign approved. Blue Sign is a certification for companies to ensure that they are providing safe and sustainable working environments for their people. Blue Sign also traces each textile that the company is using for their products to ensure that it is coming from a sustainable source. Both Big Agnes and Cita Summit, some of the biggest names in the sleeping bag market, are both RDS and Blue Sign approved. Synthetic fill is a blanket term to cover a variety of different synthetic products developed by companies to offer a cheaper alternative to down. Different companies create different proprietary kinds of fill with different fiber technology. While all of these products are slightly different, there is a few things that all of them have in common. They are either short staple fibers or long continuous filaments, and they're all essentially plastic. If you have an allergy to down, for example, synthetic fill offers one of the few solutions that are commonly available. Synthetic fill sleeping bags also tend to be the optimal choice for pet blankets or kids sleeping bags because they tend to be easier to wash and dry. Synthetic sleeping bags that have short staple fibers try to mimic down's plumes, which means it compresses well, however it does break down faster over continuous use. Which means this style of bag is not going to have a very long lifespan and is arguably not worth your hard earned money. The long continuous filaments that most of us remember in our cheap sleeping bags as kids weaves filaments of different diameters together to create a very durable high loft insulation. However, it doesn't compress well and it's a little heavy, which means the lower temperature rating of your bag, the bigger and heavier the bag is going to be. Both of these main kinds of insulation do their best to try to imitate Down's lofting ability. However, no manufacturer has ever been able to replicate Down's durability and compressibility. Despite the performance comparison between synthetic and Down, most new campers end up choosing a synthetic sleeping bag as their first option because of its price. 
if camping is just something that you're trying out and it's not something that you know that you're going to enjoy and do long term, it's totally okay to purchase the cheaper synthetic sleeping bag, try it out a couple times. And if you decide that that's something that you want to do more of, you can save up and purchase a higher quality down sleeping bag, unless you're allergic to down. <laughs> if you do choose to upgrade from your synthetic sleeping bag, or if your old synthetic bag is reaching the end of its life, I highly encourage you to find different ways to recycle that old sleeping bag instead of just throwing it away. Synthetic sleeping bags make excellent pet blankets, and even if you don't have pets, you can gift it to somebody else that you know has pets or donate it to an animal shelter. If you're just upgrading sleeping bags and your old synthetic sleeping bag still has a lot of life left in it, I highly encourage you to either donate it to a thrift store like Goodwill or to your local thrift store or an outdoor gear company that sells used gear. Anything that we can do to keep synthetic sleeping bags out of landfill, I would be very happy about. <laughs> to recap, I'll put a little chart here on the screen with the pros and cons of each kind of insulation. Down insulation has the best warmth to weight ratio. It's lightweight, compressible, and packs very small. It's very durable and can last over 10 years with proper care. It is, however, very expensive and takes more time and attention to dry properly. It is also an animal byproduct. Synthetic insulation is non-allergenic, it's less expensive, and it dries faster and is easier to maintain. It doesn't compress very well, however, and it has a very poor weight to warmth ratio. It also has a shorter lifespan than down, it's heavy, and it's made of plastic. Whatever choice you make, I highly encourage you to think about the longevity of the product and how many times you're going to use it before you write something off as just too expensive. Maybe even break down how many times you're going to realistically sleep in that sleeping bag over a period of time. Let's say you only go camping a couple of times a year, say six to seven nights in total over the span of one year. The long life of a $400 down bag means just in the span of one year, every time you sleep in that bag, it's gonna be about $57. But we both know that it's going to live much longer than that. So alternatively, that's about $19 per use in the span of three years. Most manufacturers list the lifespan of a down sleeping bag as 10 to 15 years. Alternatively, the lifespan of a synthetic sleeping bag as listed by the manufacturers is only two to four years. It may take a little bit more time to save enough money to buy a more expensive down bag. This is true. And if you want to go sooner than later, then absolutely buy a synthetic bag and then save for a more expensive bag if you want one. But keep in mind that the more expensive bag is going to last you much longer than the cheaper one. I hope this video helps you make the right decision for you. And in the meantime, guys, question for my end screen crew, Tell me about the first time that you went camping. And if you haven't camped before and you want to, tell me when you're gonna go. Okay, I'll see you guys later.